reef spearfishing with bass is probably my favorite way of hunting these fish. It's so exciting when you get in a real concentration, a big shoal of bass, and they're milling all around you, twisting and turning in the current, and you're just waiting to pick out that, that standout fish that you really want to shoot. There's nothing quite like it in UK spearfishing. There's no other fish that shoals in such big numbers and moves at such pace. And in this video, we're going to cover some top tips, tactics, and techniques for getting the most out of your spearfishing on the reefs for bass. Now, I've found some truly exceptional reefs off the coast of Anglesey in North Wales, and we're just going to cover the tactics in this video. We'll look at a typical reef here, and then we'll look at how the current's flowing onto this reef. And in this video, we're going to cover four different areas. The first one we're going to cover is the sand line, where the reef meets the sand. After that, we're going to be covering the pinch point shown here, where the current hits the reef, funnels up, and increases in speed. We're going to look at the sort of fish you tend to get there. We're going to look at hunting in the kelp gullies and the sort of slacker areas you get in the shallows and the side of the reef. And finally, my favorite area is the kelpy slack behind the reef. This is where I tend to get most of my biggest fish. Now, the sand line can be a really, really productive area. I've covered this in some of my Pollock videos before. And the fish tend to move pretty <laughs> fast along the sand line at a hunting pace. Now, the reason you get fish in these sand line areas is all the food kind of washes into the reef and you get loads of you know, crab shells, crustaceans, etc. Shellfish get washed into the, the corner of the reef. And this is actually a really good area in coarse fishing as well, particularly for perch, any kind of corner like this. And in a minute, you'll see some fish moving pretty quickly along the edge of this, this reef here. Now, because there's not much cover, it's very important to stay really, really still. You can see here I'm barely moving at all. I've seen some fish coming now. And I'm just waiting for that bass to get really, really close and an easy broadside shot there to take it out. It's a nice fish, about 60 centimeters or five pounds or so. A pretty, pretty good fish to get. Now, one of the things you'll see in this second video is just how quickly the fish tend to come in when you're on the sand line. And I think that's because they're moving at a hunting pace. They're not milling around or resting. So often you'll get fish straight away. Here I'm dropping down about four or five meters away from the sand line, just the same sort of area. Then you'll see almost as soon as I hit the bottom, some bass are moving in at pace. And I have to swing the spear gun around a bit quicker than I'd like and take the shot. You can see this is a, a different session. <laughs> so I'm not going out and shooting 10 bass in the same session. You can see here I've shot this this fish with a different wetsuit on. So that's for some of you that complain in the comments thinking that I shoot loads of bass. Now we're going to talk about using the currents and the pinch point. You can see here a really large school of, of small bass. These are all too small to shoot. These bass here are all between probably 35 and 45 centimeters. There's a couple of shootable size, but it's not worth it. And something I've certainly found in the areas with the faster currents is you tend to get a much larger concentration of smaller mm -hmm. fish in these areas. And you just see I'll drop down here and he tends to get a lot of small pollock. Certainly off the coast of North Wales, most of the bigger fish are in the slacks, especially the pollock. And I have covered this on my previous large pollock spearfishing video, which is worth a watch as well. So you see as soon as I settle, you know, a good number of small pollocks start to move in from the left. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll get bass kind of pumping past in the current, but that's more common on points and headlands than it is on these mm -hmm. reefs. You know, sometimes you'll see a shoulder small pollock mm -hmm. like this, and then a, a school of bass will just pump through, and the first indication that the bass are coming through is the pollock mm -hmm. will scatter. It's almost like they can sense the presence of the bass before they can see them. So that's sometimes a good tell to get ready to try and shoot a bass, is all the, the bait fish scatter. It's quite exciting actually seeing the bass hunting underwater. It's quite a rare sight. And if you just look at the position I'm in here, see how the kelp's almost over my head, barely any of me showing. And you can just make out a few bass here. These are shootable size, but I'm really looking for something uh, a little bit bigger. My preference really now is only to shoot bass of 55 centimeters plus really. Now we're going to look at some surface stalking here. This is a really, really nice way of hunting bass. And I've had most of my biggest bass off North Wales surface stalking. It's particularly effective at low tide, at the slack point in the tide. 
you've got about an hour window when often the bass are all just, just sat in the kelp. And these gullies like this, you'll see a bass shoot out shortly. These are a really good place to go for. You can see this bass moving along now. But you've got to stay so, so still. The moment you move, the, the bass will just scatter. Uh, a friend of mine, Glenn Sadler, he actually, I think he moved about 100 meters in an hour <laughs> and shot a really good bass. Thing. That's how slowly you've got to move. Now you can see here some bass off the surface. These aren't in the kelp, these are free swimming. But I'm waiting for a really easy shot. Now the reason for that is when you're on the surface, you're being buffeted a lot by the waves and you've got to wait quite a long time. So I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And you've really got quite a lot of time when you don't move because you just seem like an inanimate object waiting for an easy shot to take out another bass this one's about 55 centimeters now the best area of all to spearfish in my opinion is the slack pocket and we're going to look into a full dive here see me just come down into about four meters of water and we'll just go through this dive what i'm doing then i've got a more technical breakdown with a photo of the tactics now in the slack pocket you often tend to get less fish most of the small pollock and the sand eels do like a bit of current but i think the bass come into these slack pockets when they're either getting ready to hunt or they've just finished hunting you can see here there's almost no current this is although this area is only about 20 meters away from the area where the the current was really pumping and in about 10 seconds you'll see some bass come through a shoal of very very sizable bass and you'll see how slowly they're all moving You've got a lot more time to shoot these fish in the slack pocket. There's absolutely no rush. You can see here how we've just come out from, you know, from to my right. And all these fish are 60 centimetres plus. You do definitely seem to get the better fish in the slacker areas. And again, there's no rush. There's some bass very close to me that I spook a bit. Wait. Gotta wait and wait and wait for an easy shot. And then take that fish out. Now we're going to talk about the angles of shooting here. So... When you're shooting any kind of weapon system, whether it's a spear gun or a rifle, shooting with a twisted body position tends to lead to an inaccurate shot. So I'm really looking for a fish to appear in this window here. I'm not even looking either left or right of that. And you can see I've used this cover to my left to make sure that no fish from the left can see me at all. And this, this really makes it uh, a lot easier when you're using the cover correctly and waiting for the fish to be in the angle that you want to be in. Now we're in another fairly slack area here. This is actually off the Clint Peninsula. There's a different session. You can see because I've got two 14 mil bands on my gun rather than a single 16 mil band. So another one for those of you that whinge in the comments. Mm -hmm. And just look at how slowly these bass are moving. So ignore the first two, waiting for that bigger bass at the back. Nice long wait and then take it out. So I hope you enjoyed that video. This is how exhausted I was after one of those sessions, swimming uh, an hour out to the reef an hour back. Hope you got plenty out of it. If you do, subscribe it. I'll subscribe to my channel, like the video, and I'll see you in the next video.